I really haven't lost that much weight on my journey with Fit Body Bootcamp. I've lost inches. I lost four inches in my waist and in my chest, my arms. I feel much more lean than I have before. And I said, that's where we're going. And where did that change come from? I put on more muscle mass, yet my clothes fit better. Um, you know, and I haven't dropped a lot of weight, but my belt is on the tightest loop it's ever been. So I tell people, you have to get past that number on the scale thinking, I need to lose 20 pounds, I need to lose 25 pounds. Like, we need to get healthy, we need to get fit. Um, lift weights, don't be afraid to, you know, if you start to get toned, that's what we're going for. Yeah. Uh, so I tell people, encourage them, say, you know, you can go heavier, you can go a little bit harder. Don't worry if you're not feeling the weight, but find another benchmark for yourself um, that you can say, wow, yeah, I do feel that, or I, I feel that the shirt that I used to not want to wear, it feels better. And that's what we're going for. Welcome to Beyond the Scale, the show where everyday heroes share their stories on how they turn their lives around for the healthier. I'm Coach Brittany, and today I have special guest, Corey Kidder from Placentia, California. How are you, Corey? Doing great. Thank you, Brittany. I'm so excited to have you on today. Thank you for coming out. You're welcome. No problem. <laughs> so before we get into anything, I want to start with a game we like to call Rapid Fire. Okay. Okay. So basically, I'm going to ask you questions. You're going to give me the quickest answer that you could think of. Got it. Okay? So here we go. What's your favorite place to travel? Hawaii. Favorite food? Everything. <laughs> What's your biggest pet peeve? <sighs> Excuses. Mm, okay. Yeah. What's your spirit animal? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Most of my, my, I have a friend who says his spirit animal is Corey Kidder. <laughs> okay, so okay. My spirit animal is uh, a dog. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, who's your role model? Oh, my role model have to be my father-in-law, Ron. Yeah. Okay. So that's a great example. Okay. Yeah. Biggest accomplishment? Uh, my biggest accomplishment, I would have to say, is my family raising uh, raising two girls and um, being a husband to my wife and doing everything together. Okay. Yeah. And what are your goals for 2019? Oh, 2019. Uh, I'm looking forward. We're welcoming a new child into our home. Congrats. And uh, yeah, and looking to take my fitness goals to a level that they've never been before. So I'm really looking forward to that as well. Okay. Yeah. And now, what is your life motto? One thing that I always live by, and I actually teach my kids this too, it's a Martin Luther King saying, is hate does not drive out hate, only love can do that. Mm. Yeah. And actually, it's a little bit longer than that. It says, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. And hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. So something I teach my kids to always be a light, always be loving in the world. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, you bet. Well, that concludes rapid okay, fire. You, you did great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for participating. You bet. Um, so you started off as a client at Fit yeah. Body Bootcamp, right? Mm -hmm. And how long have you been with Fit Body Bootcamp now? Uh, I started in September of 2016, so okay. just over two years now. Okay. Yeah. And now before that, mm -hmm. what what was your fitness like? What? Um, so I struggled for oh goodness, decades really trying to find out what would really work for me. Okay. Um, I joined gyms, uh, would pay you know premiums every month, and yet get minimal results due to probably lack of drive and uh, lack of knowledge is what I was doing. And um, so, you know, it's one of those things where you pay for every month, maybe go once or twice, mm -hmm. just never really made the time to make it happen and was really just not getting my money's worth out of it. And as life would take its course, you know, you just let it go and not stop working out for a month, two months, a year would add on. Mm -hmm. Um, till you finally get to a point where you say, okay, I need to change something. And that's where I was before I started uh, with Fit Body Bootcamp. Okay. And now, what pushed you initially to sign up for the gym in the first place? So I knew I needed something different than the traditional gym where you just go, you kind of work out, um, and if you don't really have a good routine, you're not going to get great results. Mm -hmm. um, the whole uh, HIT routines, the CrossFit, all these, um, you know, class-led exercise programs were becoming very popular. So mm -hmm. I actually found Fit Body Bootcamp uh, through Groupon. And I said, you know, I really want to try this. So I bought a six-month membership. And uh, right away, within the first few weeks, I realized, okay, man, I feel several things. I feel the accountability that I need to be there because the people I work out with are going to start to know when I'm not showing up. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt great because I was getting feedback as to what I was doing, how I was doing. 
and um, I got encouragement from the owners and the coaches telling me, you know, that I can go a little bit harder, I can go a little bit uh, heavier, and I can go a little bit longer. So it was um, all of those things kind of wrapped up. Said this was the winning uh, solution for me. And right after those six weeks, I was immediately signed up and haven't looked back. Nice, great. nice. So before starting Fitbody, whether it was either before you even started signing up for the other gyms or during that time, mm -hmm. what what was your fitness like? Like where were you at? Were you weight wise? Okay. Um, so before I started with Fitbody and years before, actually I worked for a very popular hamburger restaurant. For, okay. Uh, Eleven years, and um, since my workout routines were really um, non-existent or very intermittent, um, I was pretty heavy. I weighed about two hundred and thirty pounds. Okay. And um, it was pretty lethargic. I'd still go out and be active. Um, I really enjoy snowboarding, mm. but I'd always be wrecked after you know a day out uh, uh -huh. on the snow or doing anything. I just didn't have the energy. And it was funny at that time. I would work and come home and watch TV and sleep. It really was just uh, not an active lifestyle, and definitely something as I uh, had children and grew like this is something that had to change. So you said you worked at that burger joint mm -hmm. for 11 years. Yes. What, it, what, what effect did it have on your relationship with food being surrounded by, you know, greasy burgers and yeah. things like that all the time? The best perk of working there is you got to eat for free every day. Mm. So I actually <laughs> developed really poor eating habits. And actually as a young kid, uh, I was the youngest of four boys. And uh, to realize when good food would come in the house, we'd actually hide snacks and hide food. So I would like, I have to eat it now. And I actually developed a really bad habit to where I would overeat. I would overindulge when food was really tasted good. I really wanted to eat as much as I could to the point where I'd feel sick, you know, just kind of lay there in a daze. Um, at that time, it was great. I was very active as a child doing, you know, sports, baseball and football. So it didn't catch up to me until high school when uh, I started working. I stopped doing all those extra activities and started to realize or started to put on the pounds. Uh, and it quickly snuck up on me from being, when I started high school, I started out about 145 pounds. And when I graduated at 18, I was about 200 pounds. Oh, okay. I'm not a big guy, yeah, so yeah. it doesn't hold well. And then just through the years, it continually kept creep, creep, creeping on there as well. Got it. Yeah. And so when, if at all, did mm -hmm. your eating habits start to change? So I realized in my early 20s, um, I had a cousin, we were the same age, and she developed diabetes. And I realized, you know what, I really need to be conscientious of this. And I started to make some eating habit uh, changes, realizing, you know, I'd need to be less on the starches and carbs. This is right around when the Atkins diet was getting really big. And that was probably the only thing I really changed. And I started to lose some weight um, through that time and through life. Um, I'd always try to add something small into it, whether it be just eating a little bit healthier, learning, eating new foods developing a good relationship with food um, and realizing that it's really what feeds your body. And that's really come on in these later years of my life. Um, but I've started dropping weight here and there, but it was always a peak and valley, if you will. You know, as life got busy, as you have kids and you don't have that opportunity, you just eat whatever's around or you, I end up eating all my kids' leftovers, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So the weight would always go up and down and um, was never getting to a point where I was really happy with it. So now that you're eating better and you mm -hmm. realize that, you know, food really is there to fuel your body, mm -hmm. how, like, what is the difference that you feel compared to when you were eating, like, all the bad food to yeah. now that eating healthier? So it's actually incredible um, the way your body responds when you eat healthy foods, you're putting it in there and you realize, I need the right nutrients to fuel muscle growth, to fuel the energy I need throughout the day, whether it be the right amounts of uh, proteins and carbs in the right types as well that um, not only do I not feel as tired or lethargic in the afternoon, but your, your stomach feels better. You just kind of generally feel better as a whole to a point as you become more aware of it, you start to notice those things like, wow, I haven't been eating donuts every morning this week and I just feel better. I just feel good. So you start to add that understanding into your decision saying, you know, I don't want to feel weighed down by the food that I'm eating. I don't want to feel sluggish or lethargic. I, I want to feel active and be able to go through my whole day. Yeah, and I feel yeah. like, I mean, even in my own experience, like the more aware you become of what you're eating and how you feel when you eat certain mm -hmm. foods and after you work out, it's like you stop having those cravings after yeah, a while. Yeah, absolutely. Like you just know how good you feel without mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is, okay, so. Get it out. There you Sorry. Go. Yeah. <laughs> go back here. 
Okay, so you mentioned your cousin being diagnosed with diabetes. Mm -hmm. Would you say that was like the catapult to start, you know, with your healthy eating and working out? Or was there anything else that came into play with that also? Um, that was probably the main point. Um, I was 22 years old, you know, uh, 230 pounds. And, you know, just you're in your 20s. You want to feel good. You want to, yeah. you know, this is the prime of your life. So that was the catalyst that got things started. Um, I grew up in an Italian family, so we ate pasta and sausages and food all the time and everything, and, um, and I love bread. So it was those things that I realized, okay, that's where I need, really need to be um, sensible. And it's not doing away with all that stuff altogether either. It's being sensible and making good decisions with mm -hmm. that. Um, and I think what I've learned as I continued through all that is you would try these crash diets or crash workout plans and realize I'm not getting anywhere. I'll go for two weeks and it's great. You know, I got to day 14 of P90X and nothing. Oh my God, that's yeah. crazy, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> but um, by adding small incremental changes, so my first thing I started when I started this journey was my food. Mm -hmm. And just constantly making that better and better too by adding more vegetables, adding um, healthier proteins, getting rid of fried food, getting rid of all these other things that you just realize they just add so much. Once I felt I was at a good point with that and really made it part of my routine and what I do is a habit, then you step, okay, you know what, I'm going to start working out just at home one day a week. Just try to work that in as a habit and say, okay, I, I've done that now. I've done that for three months. I've done that for four months. And then get to something a little bit more. So rather than um, just jumping in head first, it's seeing this as a journey more than just this final destination. So really, if you go back to that, uh, how do you eat an elephant one bite yes. at a time, it's you just have to keep chipping away at it. And even with Fit Body, that was my thing. So I got started with it and did pretty well. And I work on hitting so many routines. Then I get to a point, okay, now I want to reach uh, a certain uh, threshold with the weights that I'm using or the exercises I'm doing and just continually pushing to get to that next level. And then, you know, trying to encourage others in the classes as well to do the same thing. Yeah. So now, yeah. why do you think it's so important to take it like baby steps, one thing at a time in order mm -hmm. to succeed in your goals? I think generally as people, we just, we see a goal and or we see a picture on TV or we, whatever it is in ad or print. And you say, man, I want that. That's just, I need to have that. So we just have this idea that we need to attack it and go after it uh, immediately. We need this direct payout. And unfortunately, the majority of us just fall flat on our face. We just feel like, oh, all right, it's impossible. And that whole mentality say, no, just do it one step at a time. Whether it's, hey, you want to lose 20 pounds? Great. First thing you do is lose one mm -hmm. and then do it again. And, you know, give yourself points of... Um, of reference, you know, it's like, wow, this shirt never fit me really well before. Now it's starting to feel a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, the way your seatbelt feels in the car, whatever it is, you just find these little steps of where you're getting and knowing, okay, I am on my way. And uh, realizing that once you get there too, it's something you need to maintain. Uh, I had a, a mentor tell me once um, at a job I used to work at, he said, you're either, um, oh goodness, what do you say? You're either going up or going down. You're never cruising. The only way you can cruise is to go downhill. So at that point, you realize you have to strive. You always have to strive for that next level um, in a good way. There's always a good and there's a way it can be negative as well. Mm, but sure. um, that was always something I always kind of keep with me. Like you're either striving or you're, you're coasting. You're, you're going down the wrong path. You're going downhill. So, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. So aside from the pounds mm -hmm. that you have lost, what other changes have you seen? And like, how do you feel about yourself? Yeah. Um, so the funny thing is I... I haven't lost nearly as much weight as I thought I would. Uh, however, that's where it really comes in is how I feel in my clothes, how I feel um, just uh, physiologically when I go about my day. I'm not as tired. I'm doing more activities now than I've ever done. You know, I get up every morning at 5 a.m. to go work out at the 5.30 class. And uh, my days, and I go to work. Um, I also do some side work, uh, personal projects I enjoy doing. And then I also help my kids with their homework and make dinner and get everything ready and don't go to bed until, you know, 10 o'clock at night. Um, I'm able to still consistently do all that uh, to a level that, you know, before when I worked at my previous job, I would come home, I'd sit on the couch, and that felt like all the energy I ever had. Mm -hmm. And that was it. So it's, I mean, it's the way you feel physically. It's the way um, the self-esteem that you have about how your clothes fit. 
um, about what you can accomplish physically, whether it, you know, I can carry both my girls at the same time as we walk into church or uh, any of those things. Now you can have just, a third one. To yeah, go exactly. <laughs> they have to hold that one while I carry. <laughs> so uh, it's all those things where you just feel uh, proud of the, the progress that you've made and realize I am on the right path on, on where I want to go and I need to continue on that. Love that. Mm. So what would you tell someone at home that may be thinking, you know what, it's just going to take me too long or it's too much work to get into mm -hmm. shape? Absolutely. There's so many things we do in our life where we look back and like, man, if I would have started that uh, two years ago or if I would have just kept with that these last five years and I stopped. Um, and that's always, uh, you know, so many things I can point to in my life that did that. So it's the mentality is like in two months, what are you going to be telling yourself? You could have started today or, you know, if it's next year. Give it one day at a time, you know, and that's what I love about Fit Body Boot Camp. To be honest, it's it's 30 minutes, and it works. You know, it's not just this. You know, you feel this point of pride. Well, I went. No, you're going to get results. Uh, it's not taking an exorbitant amount of your time. It fits in the schedule, and um, you, you got to get out there and do it. That's the first thing. Is you you'd have to take that first step, and then as you do, you just continue on that path. Yeah, so I mean, if you, mm -hmm. like you said, you said your biggest pet peeve, no excuses. Mm -hmm. You're a busy guy, you have a family to take care of, <laughs> baby on the way, yeah. you work multiple jobs and side projects, mm -hmm. but you can still manage to go every single day because it is only 30 minutes yeah. and you see the results and you feel the benefits from it. Yes, and to the point where when you don't go, you start to get down, you're like, man, I'm missing something and it's the fact that I didn't work out that day. And that's when you know you, you have a lifestyle yeah. change and you're on a great path. Yeah. So... You started as a client, mm -hmm. but you're now a coach. Yeah. Tell me how that transition happened. Um, so that was a, a really neat time. I always kind of had that in the back of my mind. After about uh, a year and a half working with Fitbody, um, I mean, beyond just getting in that routine of going to class every day, I started to realize the healthy parts of living from changing my diet um, to the different forms of exercise that we're doing from cardio to weightlifting, um, to HIIT training, that how those are going to affect my body and mm -hmm. I started learning a lot about that and realizing okay I want to uh, you know I just keep growing so you do your own research at home right because it's become part of the routine so having all that in mind being a, a regular client at the gyms I go to I would love to fill in I'd always kind of create banter uh, with all the other clients that were there and then I would uh, also just push people if we did challenge exercises we did more exercises at the end I just love to encourage people and actually Franco from Fit Body Placentia uh, asked me one day about subbing and I love that idea. I said, yeah, it'd be fun. Um, I've always loved to be out there. I love to encourage people. Um, I love to be on a team and that's where it started taking off. Um, so I kind of would fill in on warm ups and things of that and start taking on classes. And, um, it's been great to be honest, just to, I'm personally bought into seeing the success of everybody who comes in, seeing them pick up heavier weights, seeing them going just a few more, uh, few more rounds without having to take a break. Uh, every step of the way. It's just uh, encouraging. So I love uh, that aspect of it as well. Okay. Yeah. So what about your wife? Does she mm -hmm. support you in all your fitness journey, your goals? And yeah. So that's actually doing? was a really um, neat part of it is she saw me start it and she's seen me go through signing up at the big box gym mm -hmm. and going once every other month and realizing, <laughs> okay, we need to cancel this. She saw, she was with me through that whole process. Um, and then finally I got to that point. I said, okay, I'm going to try this uh, six week trial of fit body boot camp, And I can kind of just feel like, okay, just kind of not buying like into another, it. Exactly. And doing. she saw me get really excited. I said, yeah, I want to sign up. And she's okay. I said, I'll, you know, I'm going to make it worth. I'm going to go this much. And I mean, give it several months. You see it. And I'm constantly going, I like to talk about it. I'm talking to my family members about it, trying to get them involved to the point where she's like, okay, I, I want to get involved. Now, she's never really had to try hard at it. Um, <laughs> however, she's like, she wants to do something. So about uh, a year ago, actually, she got into yoga uh, with a studio nearby and um, started loving that. So it was a little bit slower start for her. Mm -hmm. uh, did yoga and then in the yoga, she started doing uh, some of their workout classes um, to the point where she started feeling stronger, something she's never felt before. And through that, I said, well, why don't you start coming uh, to the gym with me on Saturdays when we have an, an opportunity? So once in a while, she'll come with me to the gym and uh, work out uh, at Fit Body Boot Camp. And she gets very proud of the progress that she's made because she's never been one to be very physically active or strong. And she loves to talk about, you know, the weights that she gets to pick up that I said, you're not, you know, you're going to get to that point. Um, I like to talk to her because she thinks, oh, I don't want to bulk up. I don't want to get big. 
And I'm like, trust me, you're never going to get big. She's very small. <laughs> I say, you're very petite and you don't eat enough <laughs> to really put it on. <laughs> so you're going to be fit and it's going to feel good. And unfortunately, these last several weeks since she's been pregnant, she hasn't been able to work out. Mm. And she's in that routine. She is very remorseful about that fact she's sometimes jealous of others or when I come home that she really wants to work out. She knows as soon as this sickness is passed, she's going to get right back into it and she's really looking forward to it. So again, developing those healthy habits, um, being able to encourage her to start it up has brought her right along and even my kids as well. Um, they love they love to show me the sit-ups and push-ups oh. they can do from their classes. So it's been a, a low life changer for the whole family. That's awesome. I yeah. mean, it's just like a ripple effect. Like yeah. one thing that you do, making yourself feel better, and then like it goes to everybody. Mm -hmm. And you're spreading the word, not only to your family, but to <laughs> all the boot campers as well. Uh -huh. So you are, seem like you're such a big inspiration to everybody. But you said your biggest inspiration is your father-in-law. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about how he inspires you? Um, yeah, so uh, my father-in-law, really it's just his dedication um, to work, to family, um, to, to living his life in truth, that seeing that, um, you know, he dedicates everything he does to, to those around him. He really lives a life of service through his work and through his family. And I said, you know, that's kind of what drives me. And to be able to leave a legacy to my family is really important as well. So. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm going to wrap up in a few minutes here, okay. but I want to find out what are your, you said you have fitness goals for 2019 yeah. and you want to accomplish those. What are some yeah. of the goals that you have in place? So seeing where I've come from um, previously before working out and where I'm at now, uh, my body fat percentage is probably the lowest it's ever been, but still definitely not where I want to be. Um, you know, my ability to work out longer and harder is getting there. Um, but as we jump into 2019, I've never actually done a challenge mm. um, with the camp. So I'm okay. like, okay, I, I'm going to jump in with one of these challenges and be totally committed with it. So um, getting ready to develop my diet plan and my exercise. So really being committed to a certain goal of um, where I want to get with my body fat percentage and what I want to feel, um, how my clothes feel or how my body um, feels overall. So. That's my goal as we start in 2019. Um, I'm gonna enjoy the holidays. I'm gonna enjoy, uh, as we go into the new year, um, I'm still working out, but at that time, I'm gonna get serious. I'm gonna um, research my diet, You know, put in the planning that's necessary so I can be successful um, at where I wanna go. So, Planning and pe preparation, that's key. Absolutely. Key right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what does living beyond the scale mean to you, Corey? Right. So living beyond the scale is really getting away from that number that you see on the floor when you step on the bathroom scale or wherever you're at. Mm -hmm. We think, oh, I need to lose 20 pounds, I need to lose 25 pounds. However, we give ourselves that number as a, as a benchmark and I think it's a very poor demonstration of, of um, or a very poor way of keeping track. Uh, I really haven't lost that much weight on my journey with Fit Body Bootcamp. I've lost inches. I've lost four inches in my waist, in, in my chest, my arms. I feel much more lean than I have before. And I said, that's where we're going. And where did that change come from? I've put on more muscle mass, yet my clothes fit better. Um, you know what? I haven't dropped a lot of weight, but my belt is on the tightest loop it's ever been. I tell people, you have to get past that number on the scale thinking, I need to lose 20 pounds, I need to lose 25 pounds. Like, we need to get healthy, we need to get fit. Um, lift weights, don't be afraid to, you know, if you start to get toned, that's what we're going for. Yeah. Uh, so I tell people, encourage them, say, you know, you can go heavier, you can go a little bit harder. Don't worry if you're not feeling the weight, but find another benchmark for yourself um, that you can say, wow, yeah, I do feel that, or I, I feel that the shirt that I used to not want to wear, it feels better. And that's what we're going for. And once you realize you step on that scale and maybe it hasn't gone down or maybe it's only gone down a couple pounds, well, let's look a little bit deeper at what's going on. What's your body fat percentage? That's the idea is we're building this muscle, we're building this fit body so that it can burn the fat that we've stored up over the years of uh, bad habits and bad eating. Mm -hmm. um, and when you get to that point, you start to realize, man, I feel better than ever. Um, I'm not so concerned with that number but I can see the results that I have in many other ways rather than just relying on that number on the scale. Yeah, it's about, like you said, how you feel, your mm -hmm. mentality, looking at you know relationships that have changed for the better in your life, yeah. opportunities that have opened for you, but yeah. all of that, great stuff, Absolutely. great stuff. Yeah. 
Well, I want to thank you so much for being on today and sharing with us. Mm -hmm. And I love the journey that you're on. Keep on keeping on. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Never peak the best is yet to come, of course. Yeah. Um, do you have any parting words for our listeners before we go? Uh, guys, know your goals and definitely go after them. Uh, don't let uh, the things of daily life distract you. And uh, keep struggling, keep going, striving towards your goal. And that's it. Yeah. And eat that elephant one mm -hmm. Bite, bite at a time. time. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you that want to get started on your fitness journey or just want to check out a Fit Body Bootcamp location, you can go to fitbodybootcamp.com to find a location near you and to claim your three free workouts. Until next time.